and welcome back to another episode of the Sinead Says Podcast. Um, this week we have something very different that I hope you will enjoy. So this podcast is literally going to be called Gratitude because this whole podcast is all about gratitude. And I could not start a gratitude podcast without dedicating it to my late friend, Lindsay Bennett. Um, so this is dedicated to her because this girl is the epitome of gratitude, even in the hardest days. And I spent a lot of time with Lindsay towards the end. We lost her in October. Um, she lost her battle with cancer. She was one of the 221 girls who got wrong smear tests and she was failed in so many ways. But I'd never seen a girl with so much positivity and gratitude for everything, even though the cards that she was dealt with were so cruel. She just came out of it. And she actually changed my whole life watching her, watching her go through this and the attitude that she had. Um, so I spent a little bit of time with her um, just before she passed. Um, we had sleepovers and amazing, amazing talks. And the last one of the last things she said to me in person was, I just want to say thank you so much for the pet, the cat analogy. And I just wanted to talk about that Um but she's just an amazing girl and I just wanted to dedicate this podcast to her because she changed my life and she changed so many lives and the lives of everyone around her. She just gave me this new Lisa life because for what she was dealt, she just had such a positive attitude and she just had so much gratitude for the little things in life as well. And um, so, yeah, the pet the cat analogy was something that I was showing to her. So I think it was her sister that gave her... Um, and she was really sick at this time. She wasn't, she wasn't well. And there were, you know, dips in and out of feeling really bad. And then there would be like a moment of like peace or something. And then it was kind of in and out. And I remember she says to me, um, I actually really craved a McFlurry. And she was a very clean eater, but she craved a McFlurry. And I think her sister went and got it. And she ate the McFlurry and she says she needed, it brought me back to like memories as a child. And I just got so much joy out of like, eating this McFlurry and it brought me back and I goes do you know what that is that's Pat and the cat so there's this analogy on it's actually 12 the book's called 12 rules for life and it's to be honest like I read back the chapter before this and I mean like there's literally one sentence that I've always that has always always stuck with me and it's this analogy of he was actually going through a really hard time and um, his daughter was really 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 sick and it was so hard to see the good in life but there was this ginger cat that lived across the road and this ginger cat would come over to the house and the daughter or him or whatever would bend down and have this moment of like being where they just patted the cat and there was just this moment of like nothing mattered it was just being in that moment and there's like so much joy in those like little moments when there's so much craziness going around and I just wanted to read out you know this one passage in the book that really stuck with me about patting the cat um so and this is a time where this person was going through something really really hard and very difficult and this is the little things that got him through so if you pay careful attention even on a bad day you may be fortunate enough to be confronted with small opportunities of just that sort. Maybe you will see a girl dancing on the street because she is all dressed up in a ballet costume. Maybe you'll have a particularly good cup of coffee in a cafe that cares about their customers. Maybe you can steal 10 or 20 minutes to do some ridiculous thing that distracts you or reminds you that you can laugh at the absurdity of existence. And maybe when you're going for a walk and your head is spinning, a cat will show up and if you pay attention to it, then you will get a reminder for just 15 seconds that the wonder of being might make up for the suffering that accompany, accompanies it. So pet the cat when you encounter one on the street. And I just always remember that little thing and I always tell people about it. So it's a nice wee analogy. And it also kind of reminds me of that. <laughs> do you remember that time or do you remember in Sex and the City and she was really sad whenever her and Big broke up and they were like, there'll just be a moment where you laugh and they laughed at something. And sometimes you have to hold on to those little moments to like get you through. And that analogy always gets me through. And even when I'm going through hard times, I'm like, okay, if I just enjoy this moment reading my book or if I just enjoy this coffee, 
like those moments will add up and it will help me throughout my day every time she did something and she felt that moment of pet the cat she would text me like a picture like petting the cat petting the cat and then there was also one night um we were in hospital and we had a bad night the night before and then the next night we put on a movie and I goes you know what let's pretend we're in New York and we pretended we were in New York. We put down the blinds, pretend we weren't in the hospital. And I said, let's put on a movie and pretend that we're not going out tonight because we're too hungover and we want to stay in. And we'll just pretend we're in New York. And we watched a movie and we ate crisps. And she just looked at me and she was like, we're petting the cat. And it was like little moments like that. And even in the struggles of the day. And she was just so brave and amazing. But she was able to turn around to me and be like, I'm petting the cat like I'm ha having the moment of joy and she and like that blew my mind for what she was going through and I even watched her every day she would do her gratitude and we would do meditations and she would thank every part of her body for everything she's been through and everything it's done for her and I just think it's important to take strength from that and I just I just wanted her to be remembered for that because she's literally so amazing and she just is the word gratitude to me and we can all take a massive lesson for her and I'm sure you've heard about her before as well because she was in this podcast sharing her story I feel like she brought a massive purpose to so many people I'm just so 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 amazed by her and she's just amazing so I had to dedicate that podcast to her and yeah so this podcast is gonna go on now to something very different um I actually have my granny on today because I will explain after why I put her on here but basically my granny I have explained it in this because I recorded this at home when I was at home I'm in uh, Australia now and it's only 15 minutes like it's so hard interviewing someone who doesn't and I was like trying to get it out of her like all the information that she's always told me um, and she was getting a wee bit nervous I think on the podcast and um, so yeah the whole podcast is literally about having gratitude for what you have and to be mindful of comparing yourself to other people because obviously when my granny was younger she didn't have phones we were always looking at other people's stuff and thinking we need this we want this but we can find abundance and gratitude within ourselves and exactly what we're at and I'll explain a bit more after what goes on with me and my granny yeah it's quite a cute interview and I'm so glad that I got my granny to do it because she said yes and then she said no and then she said yes so I got her on um but you know what there's a few things I forgot to ask when I was listening back I was like oh but all I know is that like my granny had these amazing happy memories she always tells me about these happy memories of you know living at home because she is one of 18 and she's going to talk us through what it was like living with um all these children coming in and out of the house over the years and yeah and she always seemed so happy and always talked about her happy memories and I just wanted you to hear this especially kind of to the Christmas period when we're always looking at other people's doing other things or buying all the big presents so yeah we're just going to go into that now and then I'll come back and like do a little talk about it then but just before we go into today's podcast, I just wanted to thank the sponsors BetterHelp for always sponsoring the podcast. They've been sponsoring the podcast since day one. So thank you guys to anyone who has signed up and they're an online therapy platform where you can get counselors and therapists online. You can talk to them through Zoom. You can talk to, talk to them through text. Um, it's very accessible. It's literally an app on your phone. You click a time where you're um, able to talk to them it matches with them they'll give you the timetable and you just book in and you have your therapy and I usually do like little six week stints and stuff whenever I'm going through stuff like breakups or moving to new places or going through any kind of change I usually just do like a wee six week stint so you can get 10% off with betterhelp.com slash Sinead that is betterhelp.com slash Sinead. So hello granny. Hello Sinead. Welcome to the Sinead Says podcast. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today. I didn't think you were going to make it. Well, I've nearly changed my mind, you know. I know, because he texted me yesterday saying, do I have to do it? And I said, no. Yeah. And then you expect you still thought I was coming? And then well, you, yes, wa you yes. wanted to come on? Well, I did and I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're here now and it's all that matters. Mm -hmm. Do you know what we're talking about today? Pardon? Do you know what we're talking about today? About my family, about me. Yes. So my granny was one of 18 children. I know. So 
everyone is my cousin in this town. So thanks for that. But she started telling me one time, I started to question her about things growing up and it became really interesting to me. So I and, like quizzed her even more, found out a lot of things. I think the first thing I said to you was, um, you know, how did you all shower and all like before school? And you said, we didn't have a shower. No. Didn't have a shower. Didn't have a bathroom. And didn't have a bathroom. So then I started to think and ask you more questions just about how you grew up in a house of 18. So granny and granddad had been living, now they live up on this hill, big, massive, massive hill, um, about 15 minutes away from where we are. Right? Yeah. Up this big lane that I can barely drive up because it's so steep. But to my knowledge, you told me that you walked up and down that every day to go to school. Yes, mm-hmm. I did. Mm-hmm. And how many miles is that? I think it's about four and a half. Four and a half mile up, four and a half mile down. And you told me that you had no shoes. Well, in the summer, we used to go on our bare feet. But Granny, that's mad. Well, there are less than done it as well, so... Yeah, I know. So, let's go back to the actual household. So, you lived up on the hill with 18 brothers and sisters. How many sisters and how many brothers? 11 girls, 11 girls, 7 boys. Okay, and how many rooms was in the house? There was one bedroom, which is a fairly big one, one very small, and then... Y- your kitchen, just and that's all. So, Granny and Granda slept in one room, and the small one, and the small one, and then what? Uh, where? <laughs> there was about I think about four beds in the big room. Okay, but there's still a lot of. Uh, but the eighteen wasn't there all at one time, right? At but the there most, was still a lot. At the most, I think there might have been ten at one time, right? The older ones then was away, right? So, how did you fit ten people into one room? Just whatever you got on, whatever bed you got into, you got into top and tails. Yes. Was there no assigned beds? Pardon? No assigned beds. No. Never fight. Did you ever fight over it? Not really. No. Just slept, and you didn't even. Your blanket was coats. Well, we did have blankets, but then the cold weather, after a coat. We put them in the bed as well. Yeah. And was it, it was actual beds, wasn't it though? Or was it like? Pardon? It was actual beds with like a mattress? Oh, uh, there were beds, uh, there were the beds, yeah. actual beds. Uh. So you had beds, but you didn't have a bathroom. You lived in one bedroom, all together, people coming in and out, 18 children. And you lived in one room with the four beds. That's lay. A, uh, that was a bedroom. That was the bedroom, and what people slept on the sofas as well. No, 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 no. But sure, what if you didn't get a space? Well, there could maybe be four or six in one bed, so there was plenty for four beds in the there bedroom. You go. Yeah, top to tail, as long yes. as your as long as your head's down. Yeah. And so, tell us about the no washroom, because I says to Granny, like, you know what? Look, how many toilets did you have with all them people? And she goes, sure, there was no toilet. There wasn't, no, there wasn't a toilet. Right. No. And you just went out to the toilet in the field. And there wasn't even toilet roll? No. What just was grass. What did you call it, the amber leaf? And no, what's the leaf? Dock and leaf. Dock and. The dock, and, dock and leaf. The dock and leaf, not a baller. Mm-hmm. Not a baller. And tell us about how you washed then. Well, just, and um, you had your water on the fire and used the basin. And washing the hair and all just in the living room? Yes. And I remember you telling me that Granny used to line you all up and wash your hair once a week or something. Well. But yeah, a soap? Yes, whenever I needed it. Yeah. And then what about dinner time? Uh, what about it? Dinner time, you know, how did dinner time work? In the low house, you know, you came home from school and, you know, what was it you would eat? Like a big pot of spuds or bread? No, spuds. Uh Just spuds? Yeah. And nothing else? Not a bit of gravy? Oh, and and maybe a bit of bacon. A bit of bacon. Spuds, bacon. You get a bit of bacon on a good day. Yes. And bread? 
Oh, I went with Granny and Mother used to bake her all, all her own bread. Mm-hmm. Most of it. Yeah. She made about two scones in a day. Love that. And the flour she bought was the real big. It wasn't these wee bags of flour. It was a big sack. Big sack. A flour. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then what did you do for entertainment? You had a radio, did you? Uh, there was a radio, yeah. But we were played outside most of the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you didn't have TV. No. There was no electric, say. Oh, there was no electric at all? No. There was just a stove? There was a range, say, and yeah. for, for cooking on, and that was your hidden as well. Right. Right, right, right. And I remember you saying that, I think it was Grandad that was saying this, that the radio, you couldn't, you had to get it charged. You had to get the battery charged. Oh, well. it was a wet battery, I think they called them. I don't know, but you had to leave it on. So you outside. had to leave it in, and then for two days you had no access no. to the outside world then? No. No? But in those days, a lot of ones, people visited each other's houses, you know, they used to call it a Killian. Killian? Yeah. But then would you walk to people's houses? Hmm. Four mile up, four mile down? No, well, there are ones closer than that now. Oh, right, okay. Because they're... You have a big, huge lane, so you walk to school, and what you would all walk to school together? Normally, yes. Yeah? <laughs> and then in school, did you have to bring anything there, like turf or anything? or? No, you had to bring your lunch with you. Just your lunch? Yes, and the school provided the milk. Right. That's good. Oh. Yeah. So then you went to school, and then you came back, but like you had no shoes in the summer because... Why did you have no shoes in the summer? Because in the summertime, the end, we just went in our bare feet. Good weather. Is that not sore? Not really. No. Right, okay. And what about things like Christmas? Any toys? Um, It used to be, I remember getting a a plastic tea set. (laughs) We dolls, plastic tea set. Right. One year. And it, it was mostly fruit and... You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. I know. An I apple mean, and orange or whatever. I mean, buying for like 18 people isn't easy. Yeah, but them 18 wasn't there all at one time, you say. I know, Maybe but you know. still, like, coming and going. Oh, I, yes. Oh, I. And what about when you left? Well, like, what, like, did you leave? You went to England then? Pardon? You went to England then? Yes. After that, so were you there until you were 18? Yes. So you went to school till you were 18 or till maybe you were 16? No, I was working in the factory in Castle Derrick. Right, okay. For two years. And then how would you get there? Bicycle. Oh, you had a bicycle then? Oh, did it? Oh, I big shot. Mm-hmm. Oh, I right, okay. So you're in the factory, and then where did you meet my granda? Um, at home, yeah, like in, at home. Yeah? Yeah. At home where? In Castle Derrick? There, when we lived. Uh, I was back home then, out of England then, that day. That's when I met our kid. Our kid. <laughs> 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 but where did you meet him? Like, whereabouts? Oh, like yes, a, at a d- disco? D- 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 uh, dance, yes. Right, okay. Did he come up to you or did you come up to him? Oh, no, he came to me. He came to you? Yeah. Grandpa was a handsome man. Still is. Do you think so? Oh, why? Uh, Grandpa's well. a dasher. One of them, and his old pictures of the hair and all. Uh-huh. Oh. And then, uh, you, would you have brought him back into the house? No, not for a while, no. No? Oh, no, no, not for a while. And then, would anybody come and live in, the, in your in your mum's house then? Apart from just you, you'd all moved out? No, but then all the young ones are still there. Right. So where were you, middle? I'm about... I am about the middle, I would say. Yeah, roughly about the middle. Roughly in the middle. So you were kind of seeing with the young ones and then the old ones. So you had a bit of both. Yeah. And was there any trouble in the house? Like, how did you all get on? Yeah, I was doing it fine, you know, and happy enough. Yeah? And, yeah. And would you consider yourself, because back then days, it's very different to these days. 
because we know what everyone's at. Mm-hmm. We can see what we're doing. You can go on Facebook. Mm-hmm. You go on Facebook yourself for we knows it. Mm-hmm. Right. So back in them days, you didn't know, you know, what was going on in someone else's house. No, I know. But I don't think anybody had eighteen children in one house. So no, probably not. No. The, yeah, your house was kind of special. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and um, did you <laughs> would you classify yourself as poor then at what like would you classify yourself then as like poor no because all the rest of the family ha- had jobs the no they they were much the same like yeah uh, uh. yeah all right okay okay and were you happy that's the main question have a childhood, you yeah, know? yeah, we did, yeah, yeah, I did. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, there was loads of friends to hang about with, anyway. Yes, yeah, uh, <laughs> plenty to fight with. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you think um, is different now in this generation compared to back then? This generation mm. is spoiled rotten. Okay, why do you think that? Because they get far too much. Mm-hmm. Yes, far too much, mm-hmm. and they don't appreciate it. You think? I know. I appreciate it. Well, if you were put out where I was, mm-hmm. then you would appreciate it if you had to. I know, but you know what I think as well? I think we're so used to seeing other people with things and then we want these things. See, that's it. And you didn't see anything, so you didn't no. know any different. No. And I think that's the valuable lesson here today. Mm-hmm. That, you know, if you don't know what you have... You know what I mean? It's all about like being present in the moment and yous were all very happy. Yous yes. didn't know other people had their own rooms. No. Do you know what I mean? Which I didn't have either. Like, no, I back then. No. Uh-huh. Yeah. One last question. Um, How are you today? How do you feel today? How do you feel today? I feel all right today. Yes? Yeah. We're uh, very enjoying having you much on the Sinead Says podcast for a bonus episode. Thank you. So... We won't keep you too long today. Have you got any questions you want to ask me? Or have you got anything you want to tell us from be growing up in a household of 18 and what we could learn from you? Not really, for you are all really spoiled. So We're no, all really spoiled. There's, there's no use in telling you, is it? And if you could give your younger self some advice, or tell, well, what would you tell your younger self? What do you mean by that? So... What would you tell, like, what what would you tell, like, a younger person? You know, now that you're older and wiser, Mm -hmm. what would you tell a younger person? What advice would you give? That's a hard one, but they wouldn't listen to you anyway. I know, but (laughs) if they would listen to you, (laughs) you know, what is it, you know, when you, you know, growing up and now that you're older, you know, what would you... You know, when you're younger, you care a lot more. When you get older, you start to not give a fuck. No. No? Like, you not th- care what people think a wee bit when you're younger, and then when you get older, you don't care as much? No, I don't think it works that way. So, what is your advice? Just to be sensible and... Uh, Go to Mass? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and say your prayers. Say your prayers. Yeah. Anything else? About no. love, relationships, family. Oh, forget about them. <laughs> no, Granny. Sure, you're off, never off the phone with all your sisters. You have to keep in contact. Oh, I. Yes. Sure, yeah. That's good advice. Mm-hmm. Keep in contact. Oh, I keep in contact. Yes. yes. And don't smoke. And, uh, and don't smoke and don't put it off. Don't smoke and don't put it off. Put what off? Uh, say, I'll ring her now. I'll ring her later or something. Right. Else. Yes, or I'll go to visit her, but I'll go later. Yes. Yes. But well, anyway, okay. Okay. Yeah. This is Granny's famous words. If I say, Granny, like I did this and did that, and she goes, okay. Go on, say it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> That's it for today. Right. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you, Granny, aka Kitty Logue, for coming on the podcast and telling us her story. Um, I've sat down with Granny many, many times and listened to her stories from her childhood and they've always just seemed so happy. And I just wanted to bring her on to show 
how we can have gratitude um because especially at this time of year that's why I brought like I brought this out at this time of year as well because we can look at other people's presence and we can look at other people's lives and we have to be very very careful on how we are observing it because if we're observing it like I need that they have it when in fact we have everything that we need like my granny had everything that she needed she was happy you know for Christmas they got she got a tea set and she got an apple and orange and you know she didn't know any better so I think like now we are faced with watching everyone all the time oh look they're away in that holiday with that blue sky and that amazing resort and I want to go there and it's okay to look and be inspired and all this stuff but please be wary that we have everything that we need with us and we can choose to be happy with what we have in the moment and that's how we create abundance we'd be grateful for exactly what we have and you know it could be worse guys we could be wiping our asses with um what is it a docket leave docket leave Jack and leave you know what I mean and they didn't know any better and that's fine whilst you know if we get the wrong andrex we're like oh you know what I mean when we, when there's other people there's other people that were happy with the dock and leave do you know what I mean so this is kind of like the point where I wanted to get across I thought you know listen to my granny was a big lesson for me and you know sometimes I will look at someone else and be like oh I want that car I want this and I want that when in fact, yeah, it's nice to get nice things when you've worked hard and, but you shouldn't depend on your happiness for these things. We can find happiness in the moment and we can find happiness with the connections around us from, from what we have in front of us. And I thought that was like the definition of like gratitude, just not comparing ourselves to other people and just being happy with what we have. And I think as well, like when I spoke to her granny previously, you know, the fact that she couldn't see what anyone else was doing, you know, apart from the people that was around her, she didn't know that, you know, other households probably had their own beds. She didn't know that, you know, they didn't have to walk to school in their bare feet. So she didn't feel any different. And I think that's where we can sometimes get it wrong because we're looking at other people constantly. And like, let's be real, guys, we're not getting out of this. We are all going to have phones. We're always going to see what people are doing, but we can choose to change how we perceive that and this is when the lesson comes in because we can't be happy with what we have um and I hope you enjoyed this episode like it's literally all about gratitude and that's that's what you wanted to get across and want to get it across differently I didn't want to sit here and tell you to do all these things and and have all these lists I just wanted you to like listen to a different perspective and know that we are so lucky and this is another thing that I was doing as well so I was actually writing meditation the other day on like modern the things that we have in the modern world that we should be grateful for that we take for granted so like you know all day every day sometimes we can listen or we can have this negative feedback like I should be doing this I should be doing that and like when we actually sit back and realize how amazing life is especially the modern world like something as simple as like having a fridge that keeps your fresh your fruit and veg fresh you know some people didn't have that back in the day like we have phones that can connect us to your family across the world like I FaceTime my mom and dad and I'm like so astounded sometimes like that they're literally in my room because it's that's literally what it feels like like we are so blessed and that's a blessing like we can work from anywhere we can like drive cars that can take us to our families so much quicker we can get flights to our families whenever whenever we want really at this point so I think it's important to sometimes look at how much we actually have and how much we have to be grateful for so like your um homework for this podcast is to look at the modern day life and see how much we have and be grateful for that and write it down in your journal and also you know meditation this is what it's taught me every single day that I meditate I meditate and if any of you have done the brave way the brave way is all about gratitude giving and manifesting it's all about taking up 15 minutes of the day to bring forth gratitude what brings you joy and to bring forth love and it's basically 10 minutes of your day thinking about what you're grateful for so even if you just think about things that you're grateful for right now like the cup of coffee that you had this morning the fact that you could just get on a bus to go to work or you can drive your car you can listen to your favorite podcast so yeah that's what the brave way is all about as well like if you want to 
get into abundance mindset, I recommend The Brave Way. So it's a 21 day meditation course. It's all about gratitude giving and literally finding yourself. And when you find yourself, you have more resilience. Um, and it's just a really nice way to hire your vibration and get into that bu- abundance mindset. So we have a, a discount code for The Brave Way. So Shania says 10, if you want to go for it. And if you want to discuss any of these topics for next week and you want us to talk about them again or you want to make a comment or you want to tell my granny thanks <laughs> for her amazing advice at the end, be disciplined and say your prayers, then please write into the Shania Says Podcast Instagram or scenarios at shaniatigrity.com. So yeah, write into that um, if you want to talk about anything we talked about today. And hopefully we'll see you next week. Don't forget to subscribe because you'll get a little notification whenever the new episode is out. And a wee review would be absolutely lovely as well. So thank you very much.